Hey, what's up, guys? This is Guy here with KB Trainings. Welcome to this new video on my home network installation project. This is the fifth video in this series, and if you've missed the first one, I started by giving you the introduction to this whole project here, and then I installed the, the cabling, the patch panel, and everything, and then I showed you how I installed the UPS, and the next step was the FortiGate. I showed you how I installed the FortiGate and configured the VLANs inside the FortiGate. So today I'm going to show you how I'm going to install this cloud key generation 2 plus this is the unify cloud key because i have a unify network that i'm building here um, except the fortigate i like the fortigate that's why i'm using it as my firewall i may change it one day for maybe a more powerful one or for something from unify i don't know but for now the fortigate is my firewall but the ap's the switch the cameras they are all unify uh, from ubiquity so this is what i'm building so today we're going to install this bad boy here i've been working on this for eight months now i don't even realize that but it's been eight months since i created the first video that's because i have to install this while filming you know right now i'm filming what i'm doing to show you and if you want to encourage me and support the channel please like the video and subscribe if you are enabled professional because here on KB trainings I created this to share with you my small projects and also what I know and what I'm still learning in the IT I need the cloud key for mainly two reasons first of all uh, of course I have a unify network so I need a controller for the unify network and this is going to be the controller that's going to manage the the switch the APs and any other um, ubiquity or unify device that I have in my network and also i need a controller for unify protect so this is going to be where the cameras are going to be uh, connected and sending footage and i have one terabyte of disk inside here if he ever fills up i'll have to change it and upgrade to a bigger to a bigger disk but first let me show you the current state of my design because i've had some changes so last time when i showed you this i had the modem here from the from the ISP, so the ONT was connected to a modem before coming to my FortiGate, but I was able to configure PPPoE on the FortiGate, so right now, the FortiGate is connected directly to the ONT, and I also had to tag the, the WAN port because there was a tag coming in here. Other than that, nothing really changed. Everything is still um, the way it was before. But I had a question here. Someone was asking me, why did I put the cameras and all my uh, computers in this single network, the main VLAN 35? Uh, I mean, the, the good practice would be to put the cameras and everything video in a different VLAN for security. Um, I did it this way because I want the cameras to be in the same network um, with my phone and my laptop because videos are very heavy I want to be able to stream from my phone to the cameras without doing any routing so right now if I'm on the phone I mean when this will be installed of course if I'm on the phone and I'm trying to stream a video from this camera it will not go to the FortiGate to get routed it will be routed at the switch level I mean not even routed it will be switched at the uh, switch level and the traffic will come directly to my phone from the camera and the cloud key by the way is going to be in the same network so this is going to be like my management slash main network and I have more security in this uh, VLAN than any other VLAN in this topology because this VLAN here is protected every device in this VLAN is known by me so I have to manually add the MAC address of these devices inside my FortiGate. If I don't add a device, it will not get an IP address. And let me show you that in the FortiGate here. So this is my FortiGate, and you can see this is the port 2, um, the one that we have here. This is the port 2 where the VLAN 35 is connected. So for, the, for this port, you can see here that for unknown MAC addresses, it's blocked. So if someone plugs in a device that is not listed here, it's going to be blocked. So I'll be adding everything one by one. Here you can see the switch is already added and the Unify Cloud Key is here. Uh, so I have everything configured manually, which is which is very good. So it's very protected and uh, I don't fear any any kind of breach or anything. If someone comes outside, for example, and say, hey, you know what? Because the wires to the cameras are outside. So if someone comes, for example, and disconnects the, the camera to plug in a laptop or something to hack me, they won't be able to do anything because they will not get an IP 
the 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 mac address will be blocked and post security will be activated on the switch so i have much more security here for whomever would want to to hack my network for no reason because there's nothing to hack i feel like people are very serious about security they feel like yeah hacking and all of that nobody's gonna hack you like to get hacked you really have to have something but i don't have anything so i don't really fear so yeah that's where we are now i'm going to show you actually the current state of my rack and we'll show you everything i have in my rack right now from the bottom we have the cyber power that i installed with you in the third video in this series and behind it i have a laptop this is a hp my old laptop uh, it doesn't have a screen i just kept it here it's powered on 24 7 and i usually rdp into it to do some things and what i like about it it's also connected to the console cable that goes to the 40 gate so if i want to console into the 40 gate I just RDP into this one here. I mean, if I don't have SSH, uh, SSH, of course, I RDP here and I console in. So going up, we have the 40 gate itself, my main firewall. We have a small D-Link switch here, just to help me out for now. Then I have the second patch panel that I installed and then the third one that I showed you. So the second was added later on when I saw that I needed some more cables. And some cables are going to my, my home lab or my data center. One of my next project will be to make a hole here and to install an HVAC system for my servers over there. So all these cables will go to the servers. And um, yeah, so up here we have the AP. This is a TP-Link AP that I use for now. So talking about wiring, right now, this is the cable that is coming from the ONT from the outside. It comes all the way to the 40 gate, as I told you, on the port 1. And on the port 2, we have, of course, the VLAN 35, which is my main network. Um, right now, it goes directly to this port where my desktop is connected, where I'm currently filming this video. So it's connected there to this port. It's alone right now, but I'm going to add more devices to this network. So this third one will be for guests and IoT, so it's not being used currently. The fourth one is supposed to go to the lab, but for now, that's what I'm using. I'm using this for everything in my network uh, at this time. It's not tagged and uh, it supports all the different elements. So this cable that lives here goes to the back of the AP and the AP is set up in a way that all these ports are in the same layer 2 network. So that's why I was able to bring another cable down to this D-Link switch to get some more ports to send to some other devices inside the house. All right, so let's come back here to the Unify Cloud Key. This is the UCK or Unify Cloud Key Generation 2 Plus, as you can see here. It's well built. It's uh, it's really strong and uh, really reassuring. We have a small screen here at the front that will show us all the information that we need to know about the network. On the back, we have this power button we also have this usb port this is used for power so you can power on this device using this um, a usb adapter right here or if you have a switch that has poe you can use poe to power on this device right here directly and we have the reset button right there we also have a slot for a mini sd card and we have another USB here, which can be used for extension, I think. But from last time I checked, it's not being used yet. So it's not really important right now. And as I said, this is going to be the main device that's going to record all the videos from all the cameras. So we have a hard drive here of one terabyte that I can show you if you come over here and you pull this it shows the hard drive it's right here one terabyte but you can upgrade this up to five terabyte but i'm going to use the one that i have now and we'll see over time if i need to upgrade so yeah this is it so i already have a cable that's connected to my switch with poe i'm going to um, power on this device and uh we will get it uh taken care of So when you power on this device, you have a progress bar showing you the, the, the progress of the boot process. And you basically have two options. You can uh, download the Unify Network app from uh, the App Store or from Google Play to uh, get access to this device using Bluetooth, or you can use the IP address that is going to be assigned to this Ethernet port to connect to the web GUI. So when you go to the IP, you need to sign in into your, your, your device. Depending on the version that you have, you may not have the same screen here. It might be different, but I've, uh, I've done some updates here. So this is the screen that I have. So now I have to log in using my Ubiquiti um, ID. It takes some steps to connect your device to your Ubiquiti account, but I already did it. I'm just going to log into this device using my Ubiquiti account, and I click on Remember Me here and then sign in. And it's asking me for the 
pass, I mean, the two-factor authentication. So I put the thing there. All right, so now I can log into the UCK or Unified Cloud Key. The name was changed already. All right, and once I log in, I have two applications that are running right now. I have Unify Network and Unify Protect. So Network is for all the devices, um, the network devices, and Protect is for the cameras. Right now, I have just one camera set up for tests and everything, and I have a couple of devices already um, configured. So if you come over here, you can see that you have the option to do a kind of settings on your on your device here we see the type of device that we have we see the owner of the device and how long it's been up and we can also see the firmware you can check if you have any update to do and here we see the the different metrics of the cpu the memory and everything else we can also see our hard drive here we're just using uh five gig out of the one terabyte that we have and uh, here is where we set the clients who use DHCP right now. And if you go under application, as I said, we have Unify Network and Unify Protect running now. You can shut them down or you can restart the, the services. I don't have Unify Access, I don't have Unify Talk, so I just have these two. And uh, location, we'll try to get a location of the device, but I don't want to do it now. Under advanced, you can see, you can activate SSH if you want to, or remote access, which I'm activating in my case. And UCK is the name that I gave to this uh, device. Uh, you can do automatic updates and everything. So restart if you want to restart it, or power off if you want to power it off, or reset, or factor reset. So if I go back, let's go in Unify um, Network first. So right now I don't have the gateway, like I don't have the Unify um, gateway, I just have the switch. So if I go under devices, you can see that I have the switch, which is the main switch. I have a couple other switches here. I'm going to show you the installation of the switch in the next video. I also have two APs, uh, one in the basement and one in the living room. I have two more APs to, to add as soon as I get them. I'll have another video on that as well. So um, yeah, this will give you insight on everything that's going on, the traffic that you have, the different clients that are connected to your network and uh, all the statistics that you may need. I mean, I don't have this because I don't have the, the gateway. Okay. All right. And you have the event and all kind of things about your network, which is pretty cool. Um, so if you, if you go back here, uh, we can switch uh, from Unify Network to Unify Protect. This is where you have your cameras. And as I said, I just have one camera set up now for test. And if I come over here, yeah, this is the camera that I'm talking about. This is, uh, I named it uh, basement. If I do a live key here, you see me, I'm, I'm right here. This is my hand. I don't know if you can see it, but yep, that's me. Oh my God. This is, this is me waving over there. And you can see my table where I have all my equipments that I'm installing. And uh, yeah, this is, uh, view but i'm going to make another video on unify protect when the cameras will be installed and we'll go over it i can do the same thing on the phone as well so i have these two applications unify network and unify protect so if i open unify network i um yeah i can connect to the cloud key and have everything that i need about my network i can go under here to see the different devices that i have uh, set up right now can go on the client to see the different clients that are connected to my network and what is the bandwidth that they are currently uh, consuming. And I can also have all the stats about the traffic, the APs, the clients, and, uh, and everything that's happening in the network. I can also uh, do some configurations on the cloud key itself from the phone here. So uh, let's see, let's try Unify Protect. So I open Unify Protect it takes some time to connect to the cloud key and um uh, yeah let's give it a a moment all right so now it's connected to the cloud key i can see this is the only camera that i have currently uh, connected so that's why we just have uh, a single screen here but um, normally i should have more than one if i have more than one configured and this is the view you can see me waving over here of course so this is basically everything that you get from the web GUI. You can also get the exact same thing from the app on your phone.
all right that's all for now guys thank you for watching this so this was just the installation of the unify cloud key it's now working so it's now time to go and install all the other equipment that i told you about the switch i'm going to show you how i did it even though it's already done i'm going to show you the installation and the configuration of the switch and then we'll go to the ap's or access point and we will finish by showing you how to install uh, the cameras and everything protect thank you for watching and i'll see you in the next video take care and bye